Hey, there we go. Server side development and rock and roll. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My turn to talk now. Okay. Time for software. Can you hear me? I'm going to start. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everybody, hey Pupurim. Uh, my name is Oren Yakovi. I am the VP of Customer Success in Redis Labs, which means that I am practically in charge of all of our customers. And I'm going to talk to you today about a um, um, use case or case study of one of our customers. Uh, the name is EA.com. And they wanted to uh, create a, a chat room and they wanted to get to 100k ops per second because they obviously have quite a lot of users and uh, quite a lot of marketing powers to get to as many users and generate this traffic. I'll do, just do a brief introduction of uh, who we are. Uh, so Redis is uh, an open source in-memory data structure store. You can use it, uh, it's a NoSQL database, but you can use it for caching, uh, for PubSub, uh, you can use it as a message broker and uh, many other use cases. And I represent Redis Labs, it's the company behind the open source Redis, and we are the commercial providers of Redis, one of, one of, one of many actually. We are founded in uh, 2011, headquarters in Mountain View, we also have an R&D in Tel Aviv and in the north of Israel. And we, we provide two solutions. One is on the cloud. Uh, if you are hosted uh, in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, software, etc., we can service you. Or if you have an on-premise cloud or internal uh, infrastructure, we can deploy it internally as well. We are now managing more than 160K databases. That is all the marketing that you are gonna hear today. So, EA.com, what was the problem? They wanted to build a chat and messaging service. This is quite uh, ordinary for, uh, for games. Uh, they wanted to use Redis uh, as PubSub. They heard that Redis is very, very fast, so they say, why not use uh, the PubSub functionality of Redis? And they got great results. When they changed to the Redis PubSub, they got great results, great performance, sub-millisecond. And it all went well when they had 1,000 operations per second. But they wanted to get to 100K. And when they started ramping up the usage, they started to see very, very bad performance into multiple seconds um, of each request, which was obviously not very good. So they found us somehow, and they asked us to consult us and maybe use our product. So they had two use cases that they wanted to solve. First of all is the chat room. They needed multiple chat rooms for each game or for each uh, uh, subset of users. And each room they decided to have a, a pub sub channel to serve all the users in the room to get updates. All the history of the chats is sorted in a sorted set, which means that they have a list of all the messages in the chat room, each one with a timestamp, and this is the score. If you know, uh, the Redis uh, sorted set, so uh, each object has a score, and it's sorted by the score. You can get it in a, a, the sorted order or reverse order, and uh, they can now take all the messages and they, ca they can sort them by the time, or reverse time, or subset of the times, etc. They also had another feature called presence. And the presence is very simple. You have a user, he has friends. You want to know if the user is uh, my friends are online now, offline, away. And uh, you want to get updates once uh, one of your friends is online. So what did we do to help them? First of all, we made a, a small architectural change. Instead of saving all the messages in the history in a sorted set, we decided to save it in a list. A list is basically a um, linked list, which you insert uh, objects from the left or from the right, from the beginning or from the end. And Redis assures you that it is sorted, right? So it's, it's kind of sorted, and you can also have 
uh, the timestamp in the name of the key, and then you can also keep the timestamps. Why did we decide to go with a list and not a sorted set? It's very simple. A list, the complexity of uh, um, pushing an element to the list is order of one. So if you have one element, you do an order of one operation. Whilst on a sorted set, when you want to add uh, objects to the sorted set, each one is order of log n because you have to find the right place um, uh, to stick it in the sorted set. But as it is uh, saving the history, in any case, all the messages come in uh, ordered by the time. So there is no point in doing another sort um, when it's already sorted. Um, and it's also very easy to maintain the size of the list. If you want to keep 100 messages, that's great, very easy. If you want to keep 1,000, again, very easy. And how do we do that? Uh, so once you have a new message in the, uh, in the chat room, you do L push, which means that you push it to the beginning of the list because it's the newest message. You do L trim if you want to keep, in this case, 500 messages. So let's remove all the objects uh, after object 499. And then you publish uh, the message to all of the subscribers. With regards to the presence, it's very simple use case, not a lot to do there. Um, there are not so many changes in the status of each user, right? They are either active or away or offline, and it doesn't change every millisecond. It changes every minute, hour, day, depends on how geek they are. Okay, and in addition to the PubSub, we also found out that they do quite a lot of operations on Redis uh, itself other than PubSub. So they save other information on Redis, and it is pointless to save all the data on the same database when you have different use cases. The reason is that Redis is single thread. So you can, you can host it on the strongest machine that you have with one million CPUs, but it will only use one CPU and one thread. The reason uh, that we wanted to break it is, since you can use only one thread, let's break it into multiple databases, and each one will use their own thread, and you get better performance immediately. And that's what we did. We, we uh, decided to break uh, the database into three databases, one for the chat room, one for the presence, and one for all the other business that they have. But, Still no joy. After we made all of this tuning, we found out that performance did get better when we got to tens of thousands of operations per second in sub-millisecond latency. But we are still not hitting 100K. And the reason is that the CPU of each Redis database was hitting 100%, which means that we cannot stretch it anymore. That's it. Here very, uh, comes the part of our technology, where we can cluster the database almost in a seamless way to the application. They, in most cases, our customers don't need to change anything on their application in order to use our cluster. So in the lower level of our solution, we still run Redis, the open source Redis. But we have multiple instances of, uh, of Redis. Each one is an independent Redis process. On top of it, there are a few layers of the Redis Labs technology. Uh, so we have uh, some kind of an API that uh, allows you to send, or you can call it a proxy, that uh, you can send commands. That it, knows, it knows on which Redis uh, the data is hosted, which is basically the sharding technology. And we use a regular expression in order to decide um, on which shard each data will be saved, and it's a sure nothing uh, policy, which means one key can only reside on a single Redis process and it is not shared between other Redis processes. So it means that on a single machine we can have multiple Redis processes, so if you have eight CPUs we can actually use all of the CPUs. Uh, you, can, you need to uh, assign a few uh, uh, cores to the proxy itself because uh, it is also multi-threaded and, it can, uh, and it's doing quite a lot of work, including high availability and the sharding. And that, but then if you have five, six redises on the, ten redises on the sh same machine, we can use multiple cores and boost performance by using that. But this is on a single machine. We can also take multiple machines and increase the cluster and scale out the cluster so we can have 
n machines, 1,000 machines, five machines, or 1,001. We also want, we always want to keep an odd number of instances uh, for the cases of a network split. You always need to know who is the master. And in a case of a network split with an even number of instances, it is possible that you have more than one master because there is no quorum, right? So you need to have the majority to decide on the, on the master. So as the CPU was hitting 100%, we decided to cluster the database. It's simple. Instead of having one Redis database, we can now have multiple Redis databases, but the application still communicates to a single endpoint, single host and port, and they don't need to do anything uh, in order to support it. And it already boosted performance when we decided on a cluster. But then we found out that um, the spread of the keys is not even because of the names of the keys, and we get some shards that are busier than others. So we decided to have a maximum of 20k operations per second per shard. Normally, the, the high watermark that we use is 50k operations per second. This is when we decided to uh, split the data. We decided to have a, a very big margin and go with 20k ops per second. And the way that we did it, we adjusted the regular expression um, to take into account the, mess the chat room number. And by that, we were able to split the, uh, the messages kind of evenly and boost performance uh, by that. So EA.com wanted to get to 100k ops per second. After all of this tuning and almost no development on uh, their side, they managed to get to 300k operations per second. On the same use case, the whole process took around three days of back and forth, uh, mainly emails, not even a single phone call. Uh, we hosted them on Amazon on a single C3 for extra large uh, instance. We actually had two more instances in the cluster, one for high availability and another one for quorum. But the instance itself was C3 for extra large, only eight CPUs. Uh, the biggest instance of C3 has um, 32 uh, cores, so on a single instance we can get up to four times more performance um, without doing anything. But if you want to get even more, we can scale out and add more instances uh, to the cluster and get more uh, operations per second, and they can scale out and add more and more and more games um, on the same infrastructure or a little bit bigger infrastructure, but without any code changes on their side. 